Ooh, hello my friends, hope you are well. Today I'm going to be making something inspired by one of my favourite games of all time, the big old friendly mutated half man half tree hybrid from Fallout 3, it's your boy Harold. And we'll also be adding a happy little lone wanderer and dog meat to keep him company. Let's get into it. Now, as we know, all houses need a strong foundation, and we're not building a house today, but we are still building a foundation. So I'm just sticking some plastic card around a big old chunk of polystyrene to get started, and I've been enjoying these chunky bases a lot recently, as I think it gives a diorama a lot more of a dramatic and just better looking plinth in general to stand on. I also add a random leftover slice of XPS foam on top of this to act as our ground surface, and then carved it up with a hobby knife to give it some natural undulations and just cover up the rough surface it had. I'm going to be using my bog standard wire and hot glue tree making process to build the main body of Harold himself and I'm not going for 100% in game accuracy but I do want to get the core components to at least resemble his appearance so I'm using a bit of reference art in the background to guide the building process as I go along. Once I have a rough tree skeleton shape I'm happy with I give it a mandatory coating with hot glue to start broadening out the branches and the trunk and then plant him down onto the base. He's still looking way too skinny at this point. I mean, look at the comparison. In-game Howd is a thick, and our one looks comparatively like he's auditioning for the lead role in The Machinist. Also, you can see his previously human limbs have kind of amalgamated into his new human tree trunk body hybrid thing. So I'm gonna use some tin foil to add in these rough shapes and the extra bit of heft we need. This was surprisingly easy and effective actually, I just scrunched some up and added it around the base of the tree first, then secured a roughly leg shaped piece down using some hot glue and did the same for an arm piece as well. I used a bit more floral wire to make a very rough shape of a hand curled into a fist and I attached this to the arm coming across the body, then attached a much longer wire arm, this time coming from the top of the tree where his shoulder would be. I padded this out with some more foil, added a little wiry offshoot here and then snipped off this branch that was now right in the middle of where his face was going to be. The hot glue made another special guest appearance to cover up all the extra foil work I just added and I ended up having to be quite careful with this actually because I was rapidly running out of glue sticks which reminded me of the great hot glue famine of 1553 or whatever year it was but luckily my glue rationing still allowed me to add a few rooty bits down at the bottom. So, this is what we had so far, and I was quite pleased with it actually. There was a definite resemblance to the in-game Harold, probably much more than I expected at this point to be fair, and it was now time to start sculpting him a pretty little face. So first of all, I just went ahead and reattached that branch I snipped off a moment ago, reattaching it in a more appropriate position above where the face would go. Then I built up a raised, vaguely face-shaped blob with some more hot glue to give it a bit more 3D-ness and help it stand out from the body. For Harold's mouth, I wasn't really confident in my ability to sculpt tiny little teeth, so I ended up sanding and carving this piece of an axe head down with a hobby knife to have some little teeth-shaped nodules and the exposed gum at the top. And this was more fiddly than a guy on a roof singing about being rich, but it was definitely worth it in the end and the result was like 3.7 times better than I would have been able to do from scratch. For the face itself however I did raw dog this baby up from scratch and I was going to use many parts I do for most things I'm sculpting but something deep down inside of me was telling me to go with green stuff instead which I'd surprisingly never used up to this point in my miniature escapades. And I'm really glad I used this actually because I'm now realising how much better of a material it is for making fine details and just overall workability for miniatures. It holds the shape really well and doesn't seem to stick to the sculpting tools as much as Milliput does which means a lot less chance of accidentally ruining something you just spent ages poking away at. I think Millipot is still a great material and I'll still be using it in the future but probably for bulking stuff out mainly and then using green stuff on top of that to come in and add the fine details we like. So both definitely serve a purpose in the hobby and you don't need to panic sell your Millipot stocks, just a few thoughts from a first time green stuff user. Anyway, Here's what I managed to do. It does look pretty good from the front, I think. You know, luckily we're making a face of a barky tree man, so my sculpting work didn't need to be super smooth and precise. <laughs> it definitely looks a little bit flat from this side, like this is the version of Harold from a different universe where his body was merged with a pug's face, but that's fine. We've got some lessons learned for the next time I'm building a mutated radioactive tree man. With all the building work done, I just cover the entire tree and ground with my homemade mud mixture to get some more realistic barky and earthy textures going on, and while that dries, we can paint up our miniatures. So, 
I bought this Heroes of Sanctuary Hills box from the Modifius Wasteland Warfare tabletop game because I thought they were close enough representation of the Lone Wanderer and Dogmeat from Fallout 3 and they could keep Harold company. One thing straight away that was annoying was this broken hunting rifle, you know it's not a major issue, I can glue it back together, but these Wasteland Warfare minis are quite pricey compared to other miniatures, I think they work out to be like £7 per miniature or something which is pretty bonkers to be fair, so it is frustrating when they come broken straight out of the box. And this brittleness is why I'm not really a fan of resin minis, I much prefer plastic ones, but, but that's enough moaning, let's start laying paint down. For our miniature of the Fallout 4 Nate turned Fallout 3 Lone Wanderer, I'm going for the classic vault jumpsuit look with a darker blue base colour and yellow accessory stripes. I feel like the vault suit's really iconic and it's probably one of the first things you see in your mind when you think about Fallout, so it would be kind of borderline blasphemous to bring in any wacky colours or anything like that here, I think there's probably a good chance I'd be struck by lightning the next time I leave my house if I did that, so we just want the dark blue and the yellow with a few little leathery and metallic details thrown in for good measure. And actually, even though I was moaning a minute ago about how broken parts are annoying when you're paying relatively high prices for a miniature, I have to say, these are really well detailed, you know, don't let my aggressively mediocre painting deceive you. This vault suit is covered in tiny little buckles and ruffles and all kinds of details that maybe aren't achievable on plastic miniatures. So I guess resin minis are not all bad, you can get a high level of detail with them, and maybe the licensing of the Fallout IP does raise the cost a bit, but either way, I'm just really happy you can buy Fallout miniatures that match their in-game appearance because it's easily one of my favorite franchises and i'm a big fallout fan i am a fallout boy Dogmeat is up next, or really it's unnamed Fallout 4 Dog, who has now been redesignated as Dogmeat, and that's the name of the dog companion from Fallout 3 by the way, I'm not just giving it some weird made up name, <laughs> but I wasn't really sure how to go about painting this, I don't paint fur very often, and when I do it's usually got like a larger grain, or I don't know if that's the right word, um, like on a Warhammer model, the fur texture is usually larger, so you can actually pick out little individual tufts a bit easier, but the fur texture on this little guy is so fine that I've got no hope of picking it out. So I ended up just kind of going back and forth stippling on a bunch of different shades of brown with some black and some tan colours thrown in here and there. Pretty much just freewheeling it until I had a furry look I was happy with. Then I finished him off with a cute little red bandana and neckerchief thing and some funky little goggles. There was a fairly visible mould line and gap on the back leg which was annoying, I should have sorted that out beforehand, but some clever positioning should hide those when I add the minis to the diorama. So, those are our two little Wasteland Warfare miniatures painted up to play the role of the Lone Wanderer and Dogmeat from Fallout 3 who have come to speak with Harold and take on his quest. And now it's time to turn our attention back to Harold himself. Now that I'm comparing the miniatures to Harold, quite an obvious issue of scaling has sprung out like a meerkat from a meerkat hole or wherever they come from. I'm not sure why I didn't have the miniatures out to compare against while I was building Harold, but they are now looking pretty tiny in comparison and a lesson has been learned. Instead of having them down here staring at his root all day, <laughs> That's a bitch joke. Um, I thought it'd be better to build a little plinth out of cork sheet to raise them up a bit just so the proportions didn't seem so drastically off. I mean, we are talking about a mutated tree man, so we don't need to be too realistic here, but once this was done, it helped the miniatures to have a bit more of an appropriate height and also gave the diorama an extra layer, which was good. Then I just got him quickly primed up and ready for a splash of paint. The paint job for this is going to be very much the same as I do for most of the trees and earthy things I paint up in my diorama videos, so feel free to check out some of those if you want to know about more specific colours and techniques I use, but for today's video I'm just going to sum up the very basic process as the following. We start with a darker base coat, dry brush on a few different lighter colours of brown or ochre or whatever colours you like the look of, splash on a few different coloured washes and dab away any excess to leave behind some nice natural coloured hues re-establish some of the original dry brush colours that might have got lost during the washing stages and finally use a couple of different shades of green to stipple on a bit of a mossy effect. This kind of process for trees and earth is really really easy and I think you'd be surprised with the results you can get with it, so give it a go if you're at home and making your own dioramas and comment down below to let me know how it turned out. 
Another thing you might have seen if you caught any of my recent Swamperial Guard videos where I've been kitbashing Acadian Swampy Fusion Army for Warhammer 40k is this lovely Swampy Goo paste. When this stuff dries it leaves a nice glossy green Swampy water look which I thought might work well on this diorama so I've added some around the bottom edges of Harold and also into a few of the deeper crevices on his body to build up a bit more variation in the textures and appearance. After that all that was left to paint in was his facial features which was pretty quick and easy because he only really has an eyeball and a mouth um, but I wanted to make these quite bold so they'd really stand out and contrast with the more muted colours of the bark we just did. So I've gone for a really nice dark red gums like old Bleeding Gums Murphy and a kind of yellowing eye with the pupil aimed down towards where the Lone Wanderer will be standing. I think these last little touches help to transform Harold from an inanimate husk of a tree into a living, irradiated mutant tree man hybrid, and all that we needed to do now was breathe a bit more life into the surrounding area. To give some context of people who have had no clue what I've been talking about this entire video, and I probably should have done this at the beginning rather than right at the end to be fair, but Fallout is set in a post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland and Harold was a man who received a big old dose of radiation which led to a small tree growing out of his head. This tree continued to grow, eventually taking over his whole body and rooting him down into the ground where he slept. Somehow his funky radioactive tree juices mingled with the earth and transformed a section of the barren wasteland into a lush forest which attracted followers who see him as some kind of religious deity type thing and eventually the lone wanderer who he asked to end his suffering as apparently mutant tree life is not all it's cracked up to be. So since we've ended up with a relatively small diorama here today I'm not shoehorning in a bunch of other trees as I don't want it to end up being too cluttered. I want Harold's silhouette to be the main attraction here so I'm just going to bring some naturey goodness into his immediate surroundings using some different plants and grass tufts as well as some fine flock and then finally some little mushrooms I've made. These were made from milli parts, see I told you I wouldn't abandon it completely for green stuff, painted with the brightest radioactive green paint I could find and I just thought they'd be the perfect last little details we need to pull everything together. They don't look exactly the same as the in-game versions like everything else in this diorama but they're definitely inspired by them and they gave the diorama some nice bright bursts of colour to contrast with the other parts and finish everything off. Now finally all I needed to do was add the miniatures paint the base black and see how it all came out. So my friends, what do you think? This was a really fun video for me to make as I love Fallout and I love making dioramas so this was like the little weird love child of those two things and of course this doesn't look identical to the in-game version you know I've definitely used a bit of creative license to adapt it into a diorama as best as my current skills will allow but I think for a fan of Fallout 3 specifically or for a Fallout fan in general maybe our tree man should be pretty recognisable. You may notice that I've added a bit more of that swamp goo around the bottom edges of the raised section as I wasn't quite happy with how the ground was looking. I felt like I'd lost a bit too much of that glossy moist green wet look when I put all the plant life in place so this helped to bring it all back together a bit I think. And yeah I don't know what else to say really I just really enjoyed making this and I hope you guys like it. I've still got a Mr Handy miniature left over from the Heroes of Sanctuary Hills box I bought for this build and I was thinking about making him his own diorama maybe a little lonely Mr Handy sorting for a junkyard or something like that but if you've got any suggestions of how I could incorporate him into a Fallout themed build then let me know. I'm open to buying more of these miniatures if you need some friends for a scene so feel free to peer pressure me into that. My bank account won't thank you but I will and as always if you've enjoyed this video then please leave a like or subscribe and leave a comment down below to maybe let me know what your favourite moment is from the Fallout games or or what you're most excited for in the upcoming Fallout TV show. I feel like I could talk about Fallout for like a week straight at least, so you'll definitely get a response from me. For now though, I have been your friendly neighbourhood swamp rat, and I will see you very soon in another video. See ya.